Hi right, everybody, welcome back to the channel, the main event here. Um, I am a little bit late to the world's coverage, but hey, better late than never. Uh, before we get into it, I want you guys to take a look at the new layout. It is brand new. I put some stuff together. I did make some changes last minute before I put it for this recording. Um, so let me know what you guys think of it down below in the comments. Um, and as we are going to be covering some world stuff, let me know who is your favorite VGC player. Because this is a showcase of VGC in its entirety and some of the best players in the world. All right, this tournament. So the tournament was won by Shohei Kimura, a Japanese player. Shout out to Japan. To the team of Fluttermane, Urshifu, Amungus, Iron Hands, uh, Chan Pals, and Landorus. Um, nothing too crazy about the team itself as far as um, the Mon selections. But he did have a couple interesting things here as far as items and sets. Or items and terrorists, I should say. So he had a safety goggle in Landorus, which I thought was really interesting, right? He didn't have Earthquake. He only had Stomping Tantrum, Terra Blast, U-Turn, and he had Protect. Um, obviously, we don't have the spreads here, but they didn't post those. But I thought this was interesting because goggles, Landorus, with Terra Blast, Terra Flying, is actually a really solid Amoongus answer, which I'm assuming that's what this was initially for. Um, so that it can't be redirected and it could not be spored. It can switch into Amoongus pretty safely and it could just punish it for being on the field. So I think it's actually a really good really good set the urge was pretty standard outside of not having close combat which i guess you could say is the opposite of standard it doesn't have close combat it had taunt so like this guy was really worried about um board control <laughs> shohei was he didn't want he so if urge was on the field he could taunt amungus or he could taunt like uh prankster users obviously they would go first using like tailwind or something but if they had other support moves he could taunt them and they couldn't use those uh he could taunt mine so they couldn't protect on following turns um so if he could target down one thing with starting strikes the opponent could target down something pretty safely um is what i'm thinking he was going for but i really think honestly it's mostly just amungus probably just really didn't want to deal with amungus because <laughs> those are the two mines right here that would amungus could could kind of but besides outside of the terror flying amungus can kind of hold off landorus and urshifu on its own so i think terror flying goggles and taunt urshifu is kind of your way around that so you're not getting rage rage powdered all the time um you know what? here's more proof that he didn't want to deal with amungus <laughs> because he could have gone with terra water if it was just to resist urshifu um but obviously it's terra grass so you not only resist urshifu uh but you also deal with the mungus so <laughs> shohei was not trying to deal with the mungus at all that's actually really funny chimp out is pretty normal it is an adamant one though right it does say that it's an adamant sash uh with icicle crash the reason that that's important is because you know we guys we use the uh, adamant power in the channel before and it actually hits so icicle crash with adamant hits so much harder than jolly ice spitter it's much much harder to calculate for um so i think that's a really good addition this terror goes pretty standard i'm pretty sure it's probably just 250 252 252 252 if it is sashed um but he had isolate crash taking course second punch very standard ish set outside of you know probably uh, outside of adamant isolate crash which was not something we saw up until like this last month when regulation d got announced it's not something we saw that much the amoongus is a very common set a lot of people do go with bold i like to do calm but a lot of people like to go bold for the defense um terror water obviously to resist fire and ice and without losing the resistance to water. So Amoongus is great in that regard. Pile up story, Rage Power Protect. Um, Iron Hands with water, which is something I really like as well. It does put you at a bit of a disadvantage against opposing Iron Hands, but um, it's good against Chin Pao and it's good against Urshifu. And you drop the fairy weakness that you would have to Fluttermane, for example. Uh, you don't get that ground resist, but Iron Hands is so bulky. As long as you're not getting hit for super effective with ground, it is likely going to survive the hit so i think it's actually a really strong fundamental team with some good techs involved which is kind of the essence of team building right um you're not going to always have uh, incredibly niche pokemon choices but you could have some niche uh item selections or a niche ev spread that you want to survive or a niche move like taunt like no one was using taunt or shifu really before worlds um so i think that is uh, something that is fun to pay attention to uh in finals he was against michael kelsch which is a player who i believe uh was a singles player for a while uh a really really good singles player which makes me feel a little bit better that this guy who started playing vgc i think he said december of 2022 when he started playing doubles basically made it to world's finals in his first season um i want to look at his team a little bit too because a little bit different to the opposing one um it's actually funny right because this is a choice band uh ghost dragapult terra blast and this dragapult not the first one of like the first one that won was like justin tang's uh terror steel terror blast one with champ Pao and choice man um and then 
NAIC Dragapult won that, which was a reg the last Reg C event. So it won the first and last Reg C events. And then it could have won World's Finals. Like Dragapult was like something that people slept on a lot this year. But when it showed up, it had results. This person was also running in adamant nature. Um so for you guys who don't know in open CP formats though, you don't see the natures, right? You just see the moves, that's it, and the items. And the terror types, but you don't see the nature. So I it, it's probably a crazy mind game not knowing if uh you and the opponent are both like adamant or if he's jolly and you're adamant etc the opposing urge is going to have an uh, advantage over this one though because this one doesn't have sacred sword and the other one does and this one's terror dark so it can't even like terror ghost out of the sacred sword way so whilst crunch is great and terror dark is also great for boosted crunches and circle punch against opposing chi and pals it could leave you at a bit of a disadvantage um very standard terror grass heatran assault vest terror blast I think sometimes the reason people go with a sub on Heatran is because they want to have uh, Heat Wave, Flash Cannon, Earth Power, and Terror Blast. They want all four moves. And the best item to optimize those uh, is going to be the Assault Vest, right? Since you're not going to be protecting anyway, you might as well just uh, keep yourself alive. So I think that's a, a good call. The, the Dragon Ball has Sucker Punch, which is actually a bit interesting. I didn't expect to see Sucker Punch. I think you usually see Dragon Dodge, Phantom Force, Terror Blast, and then something else. I'm not sure if it's always Sucker Punch, though. I would probably run Circle Punch, but I'm not sure if it's always Circle Punch. Um, this is also another common Urshifu spread. Uh, this is a more traditional one where Surgeon Strikes, U Turn, Aqua Jet, Close Combat, Choice Scarf. Um, sometimes my, I like to run something over U Turn, but this is a Adamant Scarf, which is pretty standard Urshifu for right now. This, Sash, and Mystic Guard are like the most common ones. Uh, this is actually an interesting call here, right? So. I know Citrus Rillaboom looks kind of like standard, but it's not, right? Most Rillabooms are going to run the Assault Vest, but obviously he's using that on the Heat Train. So this one has Terra Poison, and I think Terra Poison is because most Rillaboom, the reason you run the Assault Vest is because you can't live Moonblast otherwise. <laughs> uh, Terra Fairy Moonblast is just blowing Rillaboom right up with that base 70 uh, special defense stat. But with Terra Poison, um, you can resist it, and now you can survive, right? Which is nice. Terra Poison, I think, instead of Terra Water. Terra Water would be good against heat wave but with enough bulk you can survive a heat wave naturally um because it's a spread move versus like a boosted terra boosted choice specs boosted moon blast there's no chance for to survive that without the special defense um there's uh, the assault vest and to have some bulk but poison kind of mitigates that issue also gives you an advantage against opposing real wounds um because now they you don't terror water so they're not super effective against you and you also resist close combat from Urshifu. So if it wants to search and strikes your grass, and if it wants to close combat, you can tear it to poison to resist that damage as well. Uh, for giraffe is probably mostly for um, priority, obviously, because it has armor tail. Uh, so you don't just auto lose the pound knight. And granted, the team, oh no, yeah, you, you would auto lose the pound knight because Sucker Punch would just beat your Dragapult and Dragonite would just beat your Chien Pao because you're Terra Dark and not Terra Ghost. So you would auto lose the pound knight most of the time with this. But because he has Fringe Rap, he didn't have to worry about it as much. He also has Trick Room in prison, so I think that's like his primary uh, Trick Room matchup. So you probably leave something like Rillaboom uh, for Giraffe if you want to just stop Trick Room if that's like your goal. And then you can just start spamming with him <laughs> dazzling gleam and psychic no hyper voice on this set which is nice but terra fairy dazzling is probably pretty strong uh rocky helmet so it's probably bulky probably can deliver certain strikes so i have to guess um cool team overall a lot of standard stuff but a couple of niche changes as well so um i want to jump to the other other thing i want to jump to are uh abdullah sempers because he's the only north american in top eight and then i'm also going to jump to maddie morgan's because they're the only two gold dangles in top eight and as you can see goldango is my guy all right let's look at the, just the top eight overall um so the one surprising thing about the top eight uh for me so you see one two three four you see five flutter mains well six actually right six flutter mains is not unsurprising um it is surprising that it's six flutter mains and eight urshifus because i think at the beginning of the tournament uh the usage had flutter main at like 70 something percent and the urshifu is just under 50. Um, yeah, it was just under 50, like 47 percent. So to see that it swept top eight and guaranteed itself a world championships, whereas Fluttermain could like if uh, if Sempra or if the person Michael who went to finals had won, then Fluttermain would have missed the, the most dominant Pokemon from its inception to worlds this season would have not been a world champion, which is would have been 
crazy but not unprecedented right it actually it's happened before but yeah so urchin will dominate the topic guaranteed itself a, a championship uh Chan Pao gave itself a really good chance it's five of them here in the top eight which is not too surprising because it while it does boost up dragon a lot um it, it boosts up iron hands lando uh urshifu uh rillaboom so it boosts up other physical attackers as well right so it's not that surprising that it's not that's without dragonite there are two dragonites in top eight but neither one of them is with Chan Pao. so it seems like people kind of deviated from that combination at least the most successful players at worlds this year deviated from that so that they could um do other things with the with the role so it looks like in this case this person wanted to have like iron hands chris or saluda they didn't really have room for because the, the team is like it's like trick room base uh so let's actually take a look at fetty's team so yeah the, it has the extreme he has terra blast terra flying which i think is really cool um it's choice band so the team itself is not like overly fast right so Chan Pao is probably a little bit out of place here. He has Dark Urshifu as well, which is actually interesting. Uh, I'm glad I clicked that because I thought they were all water. But he has the Dark Urshifu. Um, again, the team is not overly fast. Um, if I had to guess, though, the Icy One and the Flutter is probably something that like allows the Dragonite to maybe outspeed certain things at minus one. Um, so it's probably a booster speed. So maybe it actually is okay to have. But I think because you have the Dragonite here with... Um, Terra Blast, Terra Flying. It doesn't necessarily need the Chien Pao boost because Terra Blast, Terra Flying is so strong on Dragonite as it is. And then you have uh, Wicked Blow is also really, really strong as it is. It might be more beneficial to get the one, the minus one speed drops on things and then just blowing them up with Dragonite or Urshifu. And then if that doesn't work, you have the Crest Ursa Luna option with Iron Hands. So like the modes seem to be like some kind of trick room mode, like Urs, Crest, uh, Iron Hands, and then a fourth maybe flutter main in the back when trickle was over you have the fastest mon um or you leave something like flutter main urshifu dragonite one of those two of those three well flutter main and one of the other two get some speed control also have some damage output and also not mess up your own calc because sometimes people will stay away from ruins because they mess up their own defensive calcs which is very very understandable but that's actually a really cool team i actually like that i hope he releases like a rental or something i'd like to try that out oh iron hands who um at the beginning of the very first like when the format first started, Regulation B, when they first released Paradox, Iron Hands had a case for like best Paradox Pokemon until Fluttermane took over. Um, and it has one, two, three, four, five. It has five places in the top eight, which is about as much as Chien Pao, which is actually really cool. It kind of almost, you know, dominated the top eight almost as much as Fluttermane did. Um, and then if you scroll down, you see uh, Chien, that Iron Hands is in a lot of other teams as well, even in like the top 16. So Iron Hands had a really strong showing in this world um i'm surprised there are not more rillabooms but i guess a lot of people did go back to amoogles just because it's so consistent um at sporing things and i think because a lot a lot of less players were running goggles that, that now that i think about it so with that being a thing with less players running goggles because they have like their um because they may have a terror grass or because they have their rillaboom as their mind which can kind of fake out the amoongus and they have like their champ pals and stuff like that to deal with it it, it kind of makes sense that uh so a lot of players went back to amoongus because things were things were very very vulnerable to spore i think we saw that in finals right if i recommend from wrong that uh spore played a huge role in finals but um but yeah so that's kind of like how the top eight shaped out only one two chrysalias um and two Ursula Lunas. I'm glad Ursula Luna made it because people are trying to act like it wasn't good, but obviously it's still good, right? Two people made top eight with it, uh, three people made top sixteen with it. So it's a really good Pokemon. You just have to commit uh a turn of trick room and a turn of getting the guts boost activated. Um, but I think that's that's fine. But I do want to look at the team, like I said. So let's look at Semper's team. Um, Semper is actually going to be on the channel soon. I'm not exactly sure when, but very soon. Um, so he was using a team of uh, Iron Hands, Amoongus, Kodango, Urshifu, Rapishite, Pelipper, and Champa. So he's a, a, kind of like a rain team, um, which I thought was really, really cool. Uh, I want to actually use this team, so hopefully he can let me use it as well. Uh, the reason I want to use it is because I. Uh, I like the, the gold dangle here. I want to see what the gold dangle spread is. Um, he uses a citrus berry gold dangle just like how I do. Uh, he uses the water Amoongus, which I think is really normal, but really good. But he has Leaf Storm. Um, I do want to ask him about the spread on the Amoongus because I feel like Leaf Storm is a good tech move. It probably hits Urshifu for really strong. And it probably can beat an Urshifu as well, like in a 1v1. Um, has mentor, which I like, right? Because there's so much pranks to taunt. I think mentor is such a strong item now because of that. Um, he has to, he does have the more traditional terror grass, um, hands. Uh, what else does he have? 
he has the, so adamant adamant pal is like the thing right everyone with adamant pal just because it's so much harder to uh talk for one with ice spinner vice will crash though which i think is fine because it's just way more consistent and in open sheets you can see where the rocky helmet is so you you're not playing that guessing game right so you can kind of just avoid it and not break your own sash which i think is a, a good call um he does have a power which terra steel um probably is it a timid one? Oh, it doesn't say interesting um I was on Jody's stream and he said most Pelipers were timid at Worlds. So wide guard for maybe opposing old dangles and opposing Dazzling Gleam. Specs Dazzling Gleam makes sense. Protect to scout for what they're going to do. If they lock into Dazzling Gleam, you can wide guard them. Um, Hurricane, because flying coverage is really good against uh, the grass types that we have and all the terror grass we have. Hydro Pump, because it's just water coverage. Um, but more likely than not, uh, if you have your Pelipper, you also have your Urshifu and that's going to be your water coverage. Choice Scarf and just certain try stuff in rain. See, I like the team a lot. I would definitely like to give it a shot. I do really want to see what Gold Dango's spread is and his Urshifu spread. I'm actually interested in both of those because they're two mods that I really enjoy. So I'm going to ask him about those. And then the other thing I wanted to do was the other Gold Dango because I want to see what the Gold Dango set here was. So another Citrus Berry. It's so funny because when people were doing Leftovers of Gold Dango back in Charlotte, um, I mentioned Citrus Berry and everyone convinced me to go back to Leftovers. And it makes me feel like I should have been doing Citrus from the beginning. But this person actually does have their... um they do have their goldango set here so this is bold dango which is terror water 212 defense bold um that's really crazy because like that thing's not dying to any physical attacks uh even super effective ones that are not boosted i bet he can survive and like and if they're if he goes to water and they're neutral they probably can't touch him so you can probably get up multiple nasty plots with this um only four special attack 36 speed so it's not like super fast probably have enough speed to like outspeed stuff maybe like under tailwind or after two icy wind drops probably is my had to be if i had to guess uh same for like the the rillaboom and the urshifu a lot of special defense was something i think is kind of important on your urshifu is to have some kind of special defense so you can survive neutral hits once you terra maybe you won't survive like super effective ones regardless but i think the neutral hits help um a guav berry so there's a very very bulky terra still tornadus um so i think that's probably like to survive like uh extreme speed stuff um to survive like surging strikes etc with the berry recovery and all that defense you probably take at very minimum like a boosted surging strikes so if i had to guess more traditional on the earth food with a adamant nature attacks that uh mystic water to boost it the moves are pretty standard so very traditional here terra fairy is interesting on the gorilla boom terra fairy and uh what's it called leftovers um that is actually really interesting that's really interesting i wonder what the answer for um oh you know what i was gonna say i wonder what the answer for like upholding flutter mains were but you have your own flutter main and you have gold dango so you're, you're actually fine and your terra air assault vest uh, landorus would probably beat it with like stomping tantrum or something so yeah, it's actually a really good setup here no earthquake oh it does have earthquake so um yeah he can like tail an earthquake spam if he needed to yeah so that's actually a really functional team together because a lot of people don't like to run earthquake because a real boom exists but like simply just don't click earthquake when grassy terrain is up and you're fine so <laughs> You don't have to worry about it that much. Um, so yeah, I like those teams. Shout out to the Goldangos, uh, making it into top cut twice. And right outside of it, there's a there's another one. Um, so shout out to Goldango. Otherwise, again, guys, let me know what you guys thought of worlds. Um, who's your favorite VGQ player? Let me guys know what you think of this layout. Um, Pittsburgh is the next event using the rule set. What do you guys think is going to change about the format between now and then, which I think is less than a month away at this point. Um, and then we'll see what the next rule set is after that. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for being here today. Thank you. Sorry for not uploading in like a week, but I was one, I was really busy. Two, I wanted to wait waiting for this artwork so I could like put this together. Um, so I'm gonna try to upload something going over the uh dlc's news that we got maybe later today if i do do it if not i'll just move on to something else anyway once again thank you guys for being here thank you guys for uh watching uh thank you guys for being subscribed and i'll see you guys in the next video peace